Hi, I'm Paul Jordan, partner in the Brands team, and I head up the advertising and marketing practice here at Bristow's. As many of you will know, when it comes to native advertising, there have been many developments before the UK regulators, both the Advertising Standards Authority and also the CMA. When we're advising clients, we're now trying to get more of a global perspective in terms of what's going on, and there's clearly no better place to look than the United States of America. In many respects, they've written many of the rules that we've now incorporated here within the UK. The principal regulator in the US for advertising purposes is the Federal Trade Commission, drawing their powers from the Federal Trade Commission Act. That's very similar to the CPRs that we have here in the UK, which is really essentially trying to avoid acts and omissions that result in confusing or deceptive advertising. At the FTC, at the end of last year in December, published some new guidance around native advertising, which when read in tandem with the testimonial and endorsement guidelines, is really quite useful when we're having a look at compliance with social media media campaigns here in the UK. When it comes to disclosures, what the FTC are trying to guard against, much in the same way as the ASA and the CMA here in the UK, is that consumers can understand when products and services are actually paid for by the advertiser. It needs to be absolutely crystal clear. And what the FTC is looking for is a very similar test that's been applied here in the UK, namely that where there's a payment or in fact a freebie or a combination of the both, uh, coupled with control from the advertiser, i.e. the advertisers dictating what needs to be said or working to a tight brief, then there needs to be a disclosure. Clearly this is to alert the consumer or the customer to the fact that there, there's a commercial association uh, between the advertiser and the online influencer. Building upon the new guidance that was issued at the end of last year, we now have a decision to look at, um, well essentially a consent order entered into between a leading department store in the US and the FTC. In that particular case, a leading department store, Lord & Taylor, had actually paid some fashion bloggers and also 50 key fashion influencers um, who were uh, principally um, involved with Instagram as a platform platform to prom promote a new dress um, that they were looking to get out into the marketplace last year. So Lord & Taylor had reached out to influencers and blogging sites, um, they'd given them a pretty tight script to work to, they'd paid them and they also gave them um, a, um, a paisley asymmetrical dress to promote through social media channels. Now how the FTC became aware of it, um, who knows, but they did. Um, and in their view, it wasn't sufficiently clear to the viewers on Instagram and other social media platforms that there was a commercial connection between Lord and & Taylor and the influencers. And harking back to the recently published um, native advertising guidance that they provided, um, Lord & Taylor actually accepted some level of wrongdoing and entered into uh, an agreement with the FTC to ensure that in future it would be more obvious that they were marketing communications. Um, it's quite interesting when one looks at the order to see how prescriptive the FTC has actually been and it imposes some, some pretty tough obligations on Lord and Taylor to control the behaviour of the online influencers and in fact a positive monitoring obligation to ensure that they follow through and make it clear to their customer base that this is actually paid for advertising. So I think it is worth um, continuing to look at the US. Um, the FTC undoubtedly will continue to enforce their recent guidance and the ASA and the CMA here undoubtedly will keep an eye on it as well. So it's an interesting point of reference. Thank you very much for listening.